democracy, poverty reduction, and cryptocurrency. Communities get their own currency. Decentralized social networks. Let's talk about communities. Some organization or some influencer has done the work. They became popular and they have all these members and they're following them for some reason. Well, first of all, they're trying to monetize their user base, right? They're trying to get money from all these followers and trying to use that money to grow their communities. Well, if you have a collaborative project like Wikipedia, you'd like to reward people's contributions and you want to make it costly to disrupt and vandalize pages, right? So you need to have a system where there's an internal currency. Having your own currency is like a superpower. So this is, I'm gonna go through a few steps of what they need to do. And the beautiful thing about Intercoin is it helps with every single one of these steps. First of all, if you have your own currency, you can get things done without having to raise a lot of capital in federal currency, fiat, Bitcoin, Ethereum, without having to do that. So for example, right now we have issued Intercoin tokens, right? So this is kind of like a meta example. Um, people on GitHub, constantly contribute to projects. They contribute to open source projects. This is a way to actually compensate them for their work. So it's not just developers, it's also marketing, PR, and other services can be paid out using your own token. But of course, people can also buy it, as you'll see as I go through this. Also, because your currency is only really for your community, it always circulates within your current community, so you never really run out of it. This is an important point. You can run out of dollars, you can run out of euros, and so on. If you're in India, you can run out of rupees, but when you issue your own currency, right, it's circulating in your city. And that becomes really important when I get to actual cities. There's mayors all around the country who want to use this kind of system, including these guys. All of these growing numbers of mayors to want to do this, but they're doing it wrong. I'm sorry to say, none of them have had a successful universal basic income released like Alaska does. And that's because they are trying to fund it using federal currency. They're trying to get enough dollars into their fund and then distribute the fund. The problem with that is that money will leave the economy. People will buy things on Amazon. People will buy, go on Robinhood and invest in cryptos, and that doesn't go into the city. So they're not buying local, they're not doing anything local. What they need to do is do the UBI, but pay it out in their own city's currency. And for that to happen, they need to do these steps. The next thing you wanna do is distribute it to people who will spend it, the consumers. You wanna grow your community. So you reward people for inviting new guests. For example, here, if I invite people to, I don't know, let's say I'm at an event. So if I want to invite people to the event, if I post it on Facebook, this is what that looks like. What it just did is it actually tracks who invited whom. And so if I get new users to come, the person who invited me is going to get a bunch of credits. Reward the people who signed up. So you know how like you can invite someone to a service and they get some credits and you get some credits, right? That's the idea. So that's to grow your community. And also to increase engagement, I like to reward people every day for just logging in and participating, maybe sharing content, maybe discussing like I just did. Um, this is a form of universal basic income. This is already starting to explain how you're getting people rewards, rewards just for being part of the community. So the next thing is you're ready to approach the people who are vendors providing services on your platform. So that could be employees, that could be contractors, you could pay them hourly, or you could pay for specific products and services. Just as an example, Bitcoin, the network is autonomous, but it pays the miners in Bitcoin, right? Ethereum pays the miners in Ethereum. You know, Binance chain pays miners in BNB tokens. They're paying for the services of securing the network and advancing the blockchain, and they're paying in their own currency. So that's just one example, but you could pay people in your own currency for more than just running a node. You could do all kinds of things. So whether you're paying employees or contractors, you want to delegate that to roles like managers and so on. And you want to be able to control that on chain so everybody sees exactly who's getting paid out and how much and there's not really that much corruption that can happen. Sometimes you don't know who you're going to pay because you have a problem to solve but you don't know who's going to solve it. And people in the community pool their resources and they invite people, other people to enter as teams and compete to solve whatever problem they're trying to solve. So contests and disbursements are how you would pay vendors. Step four, so you've been paying people in this currency but sometimes these people need to actually get outside resources. For example, you're going to a coffee shop, it has to actually import coffee, right, from Colombia or some other country, uh, and so they need to pay them. You allow members and visitors to purchase the local currency at a discount. And the idea here is that once they get your currency, they have a 5% discount, for example, on everything in your community. By cashing out, it results in a loss. So there's a bit of friction. So think about like 
when you liquidate your PayPal balance and you cash out to your bank, a lot of people have a balance inside PayPal and they say, okay, so I will pay you using PayPal. It's seamless, it's easy, and I don't have to lose money cashing out. Think about when people tried to get you into Bitcoin. Hey, do you accept payment in Bitcoin? I'll send you some Bitcoin. That's how that happens because it costs money to cash out. Everyone is trying to recruit everyone else to accept your currency. And that's what expands the network effect, right? The network effect is the more people are on the currency, the more valuable it is to every member. You've created your currency. You've got it in the hands of consumers. You've approached your vendors and you've said, okay, please accept this currency. And you've even been able to help people to cash in and cash out. But the problem is that the currency is not really usable. If a person goes on a trip or they just go visit another social network somewhere else, how are they gonna use their balance on this one to pay for that one? That's where the intercoin network comes in. The intercoin network is basically the internet of coins. Internet connects all of our networks. So similarly here, intercoin connects all the coins. And the idea is that intercoin is a decentralized exchange, allowing you to take your coins in any of these communities and use them in any other seamlessly. By joining the intercoin network, the community gains access to the network effect of the entire intercoin network, which is a lot bigger than their community. Businesses would like to have their own loyalty points, right? And people coming back. Organizations like churches, synagogues, mosques, religious organizations in India and all sorts of things, they need to issue their own currency. Then they need to put it in the hands of people, including possibly homeless people. We could actually work with Deloitte auditing and essentially we would give cheap Android phones even to homeless people and make sure that they have an account. So they wake up in the morning, they have some food money that they can go eat. They don't have to beg people for money anymore. That's the kind of stuff we're talking about. So when you distribute this currency to tourists, you can actually attract them to come to your city. So like Disney World can give Disney dollars to everybody in the country a little bit. That's called a promotion. When a university gives it to their own students, it's called a stipend, right? So when you live in a university, you may get a stipend. And when a city gives it to its own citizens, it's called a universal basic income. That's what we wanna see. We wanna solve real social problems and we want the communities to vote on how to solve or how much to give out. There's a limited supply of intercoins, just like with Bitcoin, right? We wanna get give out less and less and less and less. However, it needs to be held on reserve by more and more communities. So there's more and more communities demanding a limited supply of something. That's the idea. Everybody's invited to go to community.intercoin.org and sign up because we discussed this all like, this is, this is our forum.